This lesson is titled Node Voltage Analysis of Operational Amplifier Circuits. Now, analyzing operational amplifier circuits can often be done by what's sometimes referred to as by inspection, that is, applying KCL, KVL, Ohm's Law, other element constraints in such a way as to eventually work toward a desired result, like, for example, the relationship between an input and output voltage. However, it's also very useful to have in our analysis toolkit a systematic approach involving a systematic algorithm. Node voltage analysis provides such an approach for operational amplifier circuits. The first step in the process, as is the case for node voltage analysis in general, is choose a reference node, then assign a node voltage for each of the non-reference nodes. For example, we might label the nodes A, B, C, D, and so forth, have V sub A, V sub B, V sub C, or enable, label the nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, have node voltages V1, V2, V3. In any case, assign a node voltage for each of the non-reference nodes. And the second step is to write node voltage equations at the non-reference nodes, except, and this is for the op-amp now, except for the node corresponding to the op-amp output. What's wrong with that node? Well, the op-amp current is not constrained by an element constraint, so certainly one can write KCL at the node, but it won't result in a useful node voltage equation because we can't relate the op-amp current to either the node voltage values or to a specific numerical value. This, of course, leaves us one equation short. But if we apply ideal op-amp element constraints, specifically the fact that V sub P equals V sub N, the positive input node voltage equals the negative input node voltages, then whatever node voltages we've applied to those plus and minus op-amp inputs can be set equal to each other. That makes up for our missing equation. Thus, we have a three-step approach now for solving for the node voltages in an op-amp circuit. One, choose a reference node and assign node voltages. Then write node voltage equations at the nodes except for the node corresponding to the op-amp output. Set the two node voltages at the plus and minus inputs equal to each other, and then solve those equations for the node voltages. Once you have the node V, you can use them to solve for any other circuit parameter. Let's apply those three steps to an example. Let's apply to this circuit and solve for the output current in terms of the input voltage V sub S. We will find that the circuit corresponds to a voltage controlled current source where the value of IO, the output current, is set by V sub S, independent of the load. We begin by choosing a reference node denoted by the ground symbol and then assigning voltages to the other four nodes, in this case V sub 1, V sub 2, V sub 3, and V sub 4. And the second step is to write node voltage equations, but not at node number 4. That's where the op amp output is. Looking at node 1, the voltage must be equal to V sub S. There's a voltage source between node 1 and ground, so we can say that V1 is equal to Vs. Now let's examine node 2. At this node, we may write by inspection that we have the node voltage equation minus 1 over 2R times the node voltage V1 plus the node voltage VT times the quantity 1 over 2R plus 1 over R minus 1 over R times the node voltage V4 equaling 0 because there are no current sources attached to node 2. But wait, what about the current associated with the negative input of the op-amp which is connected to this node? Shouldn't that be in the equation somehow? Well, again, we invoke the element constraints of the ideal op-amp, which we say has infinite input resistance. So the current flowing into either op-amp input is taken to be zero. So no, that input current to the op-amp does not enter into the node voltage equation. And node three, we have the quantity one over two R plus one over R plus one over R sub L times V3, and then minus one over R times V4 equal to zero. Let's note at this point that the output current, I sub zero, equals the node voltage V3 divided by R sub L. So let's denote V sub three divided by R sub L as I sub zero, and then take that quantity in the node three equation to the right-hand side of the equal sign. That has been done here. The node three equation is now rewritten accordingly. Looking at node two equation, we haven't used the fact yet that V sub one is equal to V sub S. Let's make that substitution in the node two equation. And here we have two equations, 
But of course we have three node voltages, V sub 2, V sub 3, and V sub 4. Well, that's because we haven't used step three of our procedure, that is the node voltage at the plus and minus inputs of the op amp have to be equal. In this case, that would mean that V sub 2 equals V sub 3, so let's simply replace V sub 2 by V sub 3 in the node equation for that node 2. Examining these two equations that we have now, we see the left-hand sides are identical. So the right-hand sides have to be the same too. That means that the output current is equal to the quantity of minus 1 over 2R times V sub S. That's the current through the load, regardless of the load, within, of course, the current and voltage limitations of the op amp. We have a voltage-controlled current source, or a VCCS, as we say for short. A somewhat of a side note to this lesson, one may wonder, well, what about applying mesh current analysis to an op amp circuit? That turns out to be problematic. Look at the mesh associated with mesh current I sub A, for example, in this same circuit. We have no relationship between that voltage across the minus op amp input and the op amp output that we can relate to mesh current. So mesh current becomes sort of a non-starter, and mesh currents are not a productive approach to op amp analysis. Thus, we've focused on the node voltage analysis method. This ends our lesson applying node voltage analysis to op amp circuits. We have those three steps. First, choose a reference node and then and assign node voltages to all non-reference nodes. Second, write node voltage equations at the non-reference nodes except for that one associated with the op amp output. And thirdly, note that the node voltages on the plus and minus op amp inputs are equal. One now has sufficient independent equations to solve for all the non-reference node voltages, and one can use those node voltages to find the other circuit parameters of interest.